Welcome to the Innovative Hotelier, brought to you by Hotels Magazine. I'm your host, Robin Trimmingham. As we've alluded to multiple times in this series, the events of the last couple of years have altered both traveler destination preferences and experience expectations. In the luxury hotel market, this shift has intensified a preference for a variety of lifestyle experiences within a single property. Where you once might have been able to get away with simply having the best spa or a Michelin star chef to lure guests to your property, today's luxury experience seekers increasingly want to be able to immerse themselves in a wide range of culinary, recreational, technological, and wellness activities. But how do you create a streamlined business model to seamlessly operate multiple lines of business? My guest today, Trey Matthew, Managing Director of the Nemecolin, and Christopher Barron, the VP of Sales and Marketing, oversee a 2,400-acre resort that has done just that. And they're here today to offer insights regarding developing a mixed-use hotel business model for the next generation of travelers. Join me now for my conversation with Trey and Chris. FOH is a global food service and hospitality company that manufactures smart, commercial-grade solutions. Headquartered in Miami, the company designs and manufactures all their restaurant and hotel products. They have showrooms and distribution centers located throughout the globe, and their products are always in stock and ready to ship from any of their distribution centers worldwide. Welcome, Trey and Chris. It's great to get a chance to talk with you guys. Robin, thank you. Um, so I am really looking forward to our conversation. Uh, I don't know if you guys are know, know this. I'm home-based in Bermuda. So I will admit up front that I really hadn't heard of the Nemecolin Resort. I know it's world famous in America, but I'm going to learn a whole bunch of things along with the listeners. So let's uh, start us off here. Um, Nema Collin, if I've got this correct, has been in operation for 35 years. So Trey, what sort of shifts have you seen in the demand for luxury travel during this time? Yeah, Robin, interesting question. So I've been involved with Nema Collin for about 21 of those 37 years. And um, I think the resort itself has grown during that period. Mm -hmm. um, so we, you know, 27 years ago it was a 35 room uh, hunting lodge in essence, and now we're about 280 units over about 2,400 acres throughout the, the property. And we've grown everything from amenities to activities. Uh, we're going through some major renovations right now to the tune of about uh, $450 million worth of a multi-phase renovation process. Um, so as the resort has grown, we've started to see some differences in, in travel as well. Uh, you know, prior to COVID, the, the resort subsisted, uh, a majority of, of our, our business was through group travel. And mm -hmm. so we did uh, we did a lot of group business. Uh, we did some incentive business, but it wasn't nearly as large. Um, I think what we've seen since post-COVID, and I think a lot of people in the industry have seen the same thing, uh, that we've started to see some of that group business fall off, especially with remote offices. Um, we see a lot more incentive business than we have from the group side. But we've really transitioned our, our, our guests to uh, multi-generational um, leisure guests with a lot of different needs than they had pre-COVID and, and a lot of different needs than they had 10 years ago. Um, and we've spent a lot of time and effort on the individual guest experience. So how many contact points can we have prior to the property? As I mentioned, we've got about 280 rooms, but it's spread over 2,400 acres. The amount of amenities and activities we have can be kind of confusing. And so how do we get to the point where someone's calling you ahead of time, whether it's uh, it's our pre-arrival team or uh, 48 hours before kind of the property, it's our butler team to ensure that you're going to get the most out of it. And we're asking uh, questions on that side, not, not as, hey, what, what do you want to do when you're here? But more along the lines of, I see that you're already, you're into golf. Um, what are some of the other, what are some of your interests at home? And then creating personalized itineraries throughout that process at those different touch points uh, when they get to the property so they can enjoy more. 
Um, you know, that that's a fascinating business model. Your front desk must almost be operating like event planners, you know, fielding questions left, right, and center all day long. How do you guys handle that? It, it, another interesting point, we took the opportunity during COVID to transfer into Butler service for the entire resort. And so the traditional functions of a front desk, being able to uh, give people keys, take their credit card, check them into the rooms, has gone away. Um, so now our butlers will greet you at the car. They'll get you to the room as quickly as possible. They'll spend as much time or as little time as you want to by reading the individual guests. But what that's translated to into the front desk is now we have a giant concierge team rather than front desk, not a front desk team. And they're able to do the pre-arrivals, they're able to do customized itineraries, they're able to spend some time. Plus, we added, uh, shortly after COVID, we added a whole division in our reservations team, a pre-arrival team, that actually continues or uh, tries to, to fill your dance card before you even get to the property, or at least educate people about what we can do and not offer. Prior to COVID, we found that that we had our return guests really sort of maximize their experience and their their time frame by about the fourth stay they were here. We believe mm -hmm. that that happened because they had to experience petting the tigers, not petting the tigers, but doing our our giant uh, cat uh, encounter, doing the enrichment tours. Um, they they had that. They had you know the artists in residence program that they that they didn't find about until the third stay, so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Um, so we're trying to 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 ensure that guests have a great experience from the first time they're here and that they're educated in all those different things to do based on some of the things they like to do at home, some of the things that they've done on prior vacations, some of the things that they'd love to try or experience that that maybe they haven't done so before. And, and Nemeclin is a great place to do all of those things. You know, I get to talk to a little bit of everybody from all around the world. And you're the first luxury property that I've really encountered that has this, what I'm going to call very cutting edge approach to guest services. Um, what sort of data have you guys been analyzing in evaluating your the changes that you've made and the creation of what I'm going to call your mixed use hospitality business model? I think first and foremost, this comes out of our president and owner, Maggie Hardy. And she says that she has two bosses in the world. And I love this. I love this statement. She's been my mentor for, for 20 years. And I've learned a lot of, of hospitality experience from her. She said, my two, my two bosses are the associates that work at the resort and, and our guests. So we look seriously at, at medallia scores. We are looking at, at a lot of written comments on a day-by-day -day basis. Um, we, are, we are walking around and talking to our associates who are talking to our guests. You know, the average person in the in the spa will spend more quality time, especially in nail tech, for instance, uh, will spend more quality time with with the guests than than I will, and with more guests than I will in a week. Um, so, how do we mine that information? I think we use those. I think other data points. We're always looking at um, at sales mixes. Um, we're looking at, at what's a popular activity now, what's not a popular activity now, and then we're looking at was it a marketing issue? Was it a, an availability issue? Is it just one of those things that the guests aren't interested in doing anymore? Um, we look at um, obviously ADR, we look at RevPAR, we use Smith Travel Research or Star Reports uh, for a couple of different competitive sets, um, both uh, regional and then and then national on those sides. And then we do a lot of uh, a lot of research. We we travel a lot, um, so whether it's the owner, or the owner's um, uh, son, and our 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 VP of brand. Um, or whether it's 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 us or associates, we do. Um, you know, every year we do. Uh, we call it own every moment, but it's our associate of the year program, and we take our associate of the year to a luxury property um, uh, across the the world. Actually, um, going to uh, going to Orlando this year, but um, but you know, we're, what are the feedback that we're actually getting from the associates who are the best of the best on uh, different ideas that are happening in those in those areas, and then. Uh, and then stealing them. Um, Nemecolon has become what I'll call a collection of collections. We collect everything from architecture to planes to cars to animals in our exotic zoos. And, and actually, um, we're, we're using uh, species uh, survival plans in, in the zoo. So we're, we're rescuing animals more than collecting them. Um, but then, then putting them all together in the melting pot and, and seeing what's there. And, and that's where you get our research. It, it really isn't 
it's anything too fancy. I think it's everyone it's everyone else is there is doing, but but I think the key for here is is really listening to directly to our, our um, associates and directly to our guests to engage at high levels to find out what they what what's missing, what they'd like to do, what what some of those trends are out there. You know, when you have twenty four hundred acres, there must be just so many different directions that you could go in. How do you figure out which lifestyle trends to follow? Which ones are actually influencing the development plan? No, I, I think there's a couple of different ways we'll do that. We'll do obviously competitive research and see if someone else has done something. But on the flip side, you know, the, the owner and, and president has done a wonderful job of cultivating entrepreneurs at the property. So I get just as many act, uh, ideas out of the activity or the wildlife um, team that I do, you know, from the guests or what's going on in trends there. They're they're going out, they're looking at them, they're seeing it. And then um, and then one of the neat things at the resort is we we invest in passion. We know that that if someone's going to bring up a project and we're going to spend a certain amount, we come up with a return on investment. That that person taking ownership of that project and moving it forward, they're not going to fail. And that's those are just good investments. Uh, it keeps people engaged. It keeps people growing. Um, and when they come up with an idea that we're able to put out there, it's phenomenal. So that's probably our number one uh, piece in some of the development. I think you know we we again um, we have to we have to keep monitoring these things throughout and using uh, whatever we can in the in the short term to um, uh, to figure out <laughs> what our guests need. Um, and and then you know it's sort of it's sort of the bigger picture of how do we bring it all together in a cohesive manner uh, to your point over 2,400 acres and ensure that uh, there's a degree of quality that stands from um, you know from the sloth encounter to it to our five star uh, dinner at, at La Trac and everything in between. No, I have to say, though, you haven't lived until you fed banana to a sloth. I've actually <laughs> done it. So I know. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say that the whole that sloths move slowly is is complete, completely a, a rumor. They can move pretty quickly when they need to. Yeah, you show it the bananas and out they come. <laughs> you know it. Um, OK, so, you know, when you have this many projects on the go, and a lot of them are really viable. I'm almost wondering if you reach a point where you're sort of at the risk of trying to be all things to all people all at the same time, which how do you differentiate between the short term must haves, the, yeah. the would like to haves and the long term goals? Well, as I mentioned, I think it goes back to the, the, the comment or collection of collections. And so we know that we can't be everything to everyone. If you're looking for an urban experience, we don't have it. If you're looking for swimming in the ocean, we don't have it. If you're looking for um, for world-class black diamond skiing and, and going off of cliffs and all that fun stuff, we don't have it. We know that that's the case. But we do have a ski resort. And our goal in the ski resort is to be the best learning experience for, for someone that's never been on skis or someone that's in their, in the beginning of skiing. So we know what our limitations are, and that's going to be the case. We will give you one-on-one -on -one skiing treatment. We'll make sure that you can get down, that you have a good time, that it's not a traumatic experience. When I was a, first learned skiing, I fell and skinned all of the freckles off my nose, and, and I still wanted to go. So they said, okay, you can do it. That's not our goal here. It's to have a good time, to customize that experience, and uh, to bring people on a one-by-one on a, on a -one basis. Um, when we look at the spa, I, I think we want to be the, the best spa that we can or the best spa that's that's out there. How does that define? It changes. You know, we've seen spa industry in general changing, where we have taken over the last couple of years a strong look into health and wellness, incorporating that into more of a more than just a, um, a, a pleasurable experience, which we've seen in the spa for years and years. He, almost hedonistic, right? So uh, so we want to change that in, in, uh, in, because our guests are telling us that we need more of the health awareness. And, and that's something that came out of COVID and has really has really pushed. Uh, we're looking at the same thing from uh, from our culinary perspective. Um, can we be the best at providing, uh, you know, for many years, we provided a farm to table, uh, five diamond, five star experience that we were OK with going to live 
um, Amish auctions that are are purchasing straight from the field that happened a couple of times a week when the when the season just ended. But um, to make sure that that we're offering that product, which nobody else can, because we have Amish farms that are you know within driving mm -hmm. distance. Um, so I think that that's the piece, and I do think that um, that unfortunately or fortunately for us that a lot of this multi-generational travel, they're coming because we can be a little bit of, of everything to everyone. You know, they can, if mom and dad want to go out and do something um, alone in the afternoon or in the evenings, our kids club is, is world-class. We're doing everything in the kids club that adults can do. So we're taking them out, we're, we're playing golf, we're, we're doing the animal encounters, we're doing skiing, we're doing all these different things, it's sort of a miniature version that's now focused on on learning and development for the children at the same time, giving them a, a heck of an experience where they come back. So, um, you know, we know our limitations. We'll never be a, a large association property. We don't have the space, nor is that is that our direction at this point from a convention perspective. But if you're looking at an incentive travel, there's not very many places that you can go, give people the keys to the castle and have as many diverse experiences as you can in Southwestern Pennsylvania at Nemecolin. So I don't know if that answered your question or, or made it more confusing, but. I think I'm coming to the conclusion that you guys are the family resort on steroids. <laughs> I mean that in a good way. <laughs> should we should that's actually... a great marketing tagline, Robin. We'll we'll think about using that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm here to help. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Okay, so let's talk logistics a little bit here. I I know something about having a luxury resort in the wilderness. I worked for a brand that had properties, iconic ones in the Rocky Mountains. So I know a little bit about, you know, things like internet access uh, above 5,000 feet when you have multiple buildings and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Uh, Chris. How are you guys handling advances in AI applications in a way that is impactful and appreciated by your guests? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is now our focus. As Trey mentioned, you know, through the pandemic, we did a pretty big uh, paradigm shift in our consumer where we kind of went more than the luxury leisure segment. And now it's actually dissecting that segment. And, you know, with the adaptation now of what is AI, what are the current algorithms? Uh, what is metadata? You know, really for our consumer, we're actually doing a great job of breaking down our leisure guests. Um, you know, where an old adage in hotels was to try to keep the repeat percentage of guests at a high number so you didn't assume a, a great uh, customer acquisition piece. We see that as taking our repeat percentage, turning them into members, and always filling our funnel with new innovative guests. As you know, Robin, the face of travel has changed immensely since the pandemic. And people are now in the new generations and the current travelers, the younger travelers, as we're all getting a little older in our hotel careers here, they're looking for memorable experiences. They want curated experiences that might be a one time, you know, that they like to travel to one place, you know, get that Instagram post, travel to the next place and so on and so forth. When we see the repeat percentage, we literally try to turn them into members that they have for multiple visits. But we're always looking at that, you know, the innovation of AI and really kind of using our marketing skills in a sense of you know those targeted ads what you're looking after whether it's luxury goods arts um outdoor activities we really work well in our space uh for advertising to kind of get to the consumer that is our new target audience um over the past few years we've seen people that have unrecognized our hotel in a variety not in our traditional sense not from our online travel agencies or our travel advisors but really from our Instagram posts, from our social posts, from our ads, and we do a variety of media placements, whether they be in Forbes magazine or Rob Report, we're also advertising in, you know, pet magazines. We have, we, you know, we look at different audiences and really try to reach out with that metadata to find our biggest reach. I think that's an interesting approach. You know, it's funny how travel goes because you guys are career hoteliers. So we're all speaking the same language. Don't you find that it sort of goes in waves where everybody wants to go out and see the world, go somewhere new every time. But really, it all comes down to let's find that place that feels like home, you know, that I'm going to come back to when things are good, when things are not so good, mm -hmm. simply because it feels like home. You know, we always have an adage here, and, and me and Trey are, are in unison. You know, the best, you know, even as a simpler thing, it's hospitality, right? But it, it boils down to always uh, the best meal you ever had on earth, right? We always do that as a topic conversation where we're entertaining guests. And the best restaurant, the best memory you ever feel is 
number one, when you're actually in the hands of the front of the house of the waiter or the chef, right? When the chef says, I'm going to take care of you, you're in my hands, you breathe a sigh of relief. And that's what we're really trying to do with this Butler program that now experiences on all of our keys. We really, you're in the hands of our associates. Our associates are familiar. Uh, as Trey alluded to earlier, our owner has a huge commitment for everyone on our staff, our associates, to go through every experience on property. So they are that front of the house. They are that real memory curator, as we call them. They're going to create a memory for you and say, Robin, you know, it's raining today, so we moved your fishing trip to tomorrow, but I know you're into spa because you requested some information, you know, and then we get our we get our sneaky marketing. We know you spent time on the spa page, but didn't book anything. So again, we'll reintroduce that to you for an ask and really kind of curate your experience. And then the second best part of it is when you have that memorable experience at a restaurant and the waiter knows you and they know yeah. what you like. And it feels at home. And that's that second level of repeat guests that we like to turn to. Um, so for that first timer, we're trying to create the perfect itinerary for their memories. And for that return guest, we're trying to give them that sense of familiarity, of home, of something they want to come back to time and time again. Established in 2002, FOH is a woman-owned global food service and hospitality company that manufactures smart, savvy, commercial-grade products, including plateware, drinkware, flatware, hotel amenities, and more. Driven by innovation, FOH is dedicated to delivering that wow experience that restaurants and hotels crave, all while maintaining a competitive price. All products are fully customizable, and many are also created using sustainable, eco-friendly materials such as straws and plates made from biodegradable paper and wood and PBA-free drinkware. FOH has two established brands, Front of the House, focused on tabletop and buffet solutions, and Room360, which offers hotel products. Check out their collections today at FOHWorldwide.com. You know, it's great talking to you guys because you guys are actually living and making work. The things that the rest of the industry is saying, oh, yeah, well, it would be nice if we could do mm -hmm. that. And you guys are actually walking the walk. So, you know, props to you for that. Yeah, actually, this this has been an experience, uh, you know, Trey's backgrounds in a variety of, of hotels in these, in these regions. Both myself and Trey live on property, uh, which was a first for me coming from more urban hotels in Las Vegas, uh, it's it's been, it's actually such a great integration. Our ownership encourages us to spend more time there. I know you guys will speak uh, a little bit later on about the projects that she's done on property to make it feel like more home for the associates. But having that connectivity to our hotel only allows for that much better service to our guests. Speaking of connectivity, mm -hmm. one of the big new experience demands of travelers is state-of-the-art in-room entertainment and how are you guys handling that in the middle of 2400 acres yeah, absolutely we have a very expansive it team for sure um as trey mentioned earlier we're going through a ongoing massive uh almost close to a half a billion dollars uh renovation it has been at the forefront and that connectivity um from wi-fi and coverage what is it now the norm of that 5G coverage and the speed, uh, we need to enhance. They really do want to feel, you know, a home away from home. We definitely take that to the next level with our technology. Um, as, as anyone knows now, you know, the world is CTV, connected TV. They're watching Netflix or watching Hulu. Um, all of our TVs have been updated as well as our cellular service on property that you can cast your favorite shows. And literally the goal given to our IT team and uh, the individuals involved in the project was, we want to we want the guests to feel like they are at home on their couch, that they have that comfortability that you and I and Trey have when we come home and we say, oh, I remember this was recorded on my DVR where I want to watch. I want to binge watch this. That is what our hotel rooms are set up for. So as much as we encourage our guests to get outside and experience the beautiful nature, we also know there are those dreary days where you just want room service um, from your butler. And even as, as that, we make the butler experience very unobtrusive. Um, we're in a constant battle with our travelers right now of high tech versus high touch. Um, and we mm -hmm. try to balance those two where our butlers are, you know, absolutely will give as much interaction as, as a guest desires and high touch and unpack you and pack you and be there for a wake up service if you want in your room. And then we're also very high tech where it can be all communicated via text um, where you can order meals, you can request services, you can book reservations, all with texting your butler and never see him again and never leave your room if you wanted to. So 
the technology within the room allows that to happen and really give it that seamless. I, I know myself, sometimes I go on vacations and you turn on the do not disturb sign on, and you don't want to leave your room for 48 hours. So we can have that service, but also be uh, abreast of our guests at any time. I think, let me just add one thing to that too, Rob. And I think that that when we start training our associates, and this has been kind of new for us um, over the last three years, we have to train them to read instinctually what the signs are for that particular guest. So mm -hmm. we have to make sure that if there's a guest that's running late for a meeting, rather than that guest saying I'm running late for a meeting, that we can make those assumptions and make that, that check-in process instantaneous. And then you've got you know other people that want to talk and they want to find out about the history of the resort. And wow, there's a great $50 million art collection that we've heard about. Can you tell us more? And we've got to read those individuals and then use the technology that Chris was talking about to be able to hit those touch points and to be able to interact with that guest, specifically how they want to be interacted with. Yeah, emotional intelligence. You're speaking yes, my is. language. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that is absolutely the best approach. And, it, you know, it's interesting to see how the world is transforming because, you know, we're sort of in the midst of a shift from one travel demographic to the next. And obviously, I'm talking about, you know, the entrance of Gen Z travelers. Uh, my understanding is these kids don't use the telephone. Yeah, they, they carry around the device in their pocket, but it's all about texting and apps and Instagram. And if they have to actually talk to a person, no, that's not a good thing. And, 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 you know, as we're going through this renovation, Robin, it was interesting as we're tearing out walls, you see the, the phone jack there in the bathroom, right? Something that was my, you know, industry cutting that I could take a telephone call from the restroom. And that was, you know, all the rage uh, back at the luxury hotels that, and now it's gone by the way, the wayside, right? We want to be able to have that intuitiveness that they're connected at all times, but not physically, right? Yeah. It, it, that, that real rotary phone is not there. Um, all of our new rooms obviously have the iPad integration with all the touchscreen controls and the, the Connect TV so they can log right back in and feel that they're home. But really, it is a it is driven on our side by our app on property where it really gives you access to everything on property, the whole online experience, the whole medical experience on your phone. I think that's... a. Uh, I definitely the world the way the world needs to head and, yep. and i think it's great that you guys are actually going there and making it all work it's sort of like paving a road for some of the rest of us okay so i hear you guys have a residential component talk to me a little about this do you see this as a growing demand or is this a little bit of a fad and you're jumping on the bandwagon or you're figuring it out how's it going sure absolutely um again that really comes back to what trey said about listening to our guests um obviously we have tremendous resource tools at our uh at our disposal with guest feedback um during the pandemic obviously we saw a huge surge in demand for private entities private estates uh, our guests were kind of leaving the city, didn't want that hotel experience or be around other people as it was during the pandemic. Um, so we went forward with uh, several projects on property for more private home experiences. Um, those private homes were so popular that, again, there was a propensity where we literally got asked the question, oh, is, that, is this for sale? Can I buy one of these? So oh, on and wow. so forth. Um, so, you know, that secondary home, that's where we see that repeat percentage kind of going. And actually, we pay close attention to not only a repeat percentage as a hotel guest, but then actually our hotel guests turning into memberships. Um, and the membership component is really where the residential uh, comes into play here at the property. Um, you know, as though we're not in the real estate business per se, we encourage our guests to have property on the, on the land here and become access through the membership um, portal, if you will, or, or demographic. So that is where we've seen a repeat customer that wants to come time and time again to really have their own executive stay. However, they want that stay augmented with the services of the hotel. There's no better, you know, uh, sense of the world if you ever have if you have the affordability to have a vacation house um, in your personal residence. Boy, wouldn't that be great if the refrigerator was stuffed, the housekeeping was 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 catered to, and at any given time I get meals delivered, right? That, that, and no that's dishes. The best yeah. Have, right? <laughs> so we try to create that experience for our guests here in our residential programs where they have these services and the amenities of the hotel. However, it is their private residence where they can have anything they want. You know, I think back in the day, like in the 50s, that was a model that sort of did exist in a few luxury properties around the world. I know we had that here a bit on my island, and it's nice to see that it's coming back. 
Yeah. Um, I was actually kind of interested, so I'm going to change the subject here, that reading about your employee programs and that you encourage them to share ideas that will enhance the guest experience. And either one of you can answer this. What would you say is like one of the best ideas that's come from an employee? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I've got a favorite and I'm sure Chris does too. Um, you know, first of all, I think one of the things we call our associates is associates at the property. Um, and I think that's a differentiating factor that we use from, from a verbal perspective because associates um, to us um, insinuate um, partnership. Mm -hmm. And we want to partner with all of our associates out there. And I remember coming out of um, uh, COVID. I was I, I came back in July of 2020, right in the middle of, of opening for COVID. And, um, and every day I'd walk through the different activities and menus that we'd open. And every day the associates at the pool were, <laughs> we got so many people, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do with the pool. We've got all this um, and so, you know, in, uh, in November, I sat down, actually it was in January, I sat down with, with president and owner, and she said, all right, how, what are we looking at for next year? And I said, well, we need to do a lot more programming at the pool, yada, yada, yada. And I said, she said, well, what was the issue? I said, well, you know, I was talking to the associates, they were talking to the guests, and we just didn't have enough room. So she said, well, let's build a pool. <laughs> okay. And um, quite literally, the next morning, I got a phone call at eight o'clock in the morning after we said, all right, let's build a pool. Did you find someone to design the pool yet? So, well, you've got a couple of different people. We'll have them out next week to have a, a view. And then when we started talking to um, food and beverage associates, when we started talking to the activity associates, we found a great location for that pool um, as part of our, our ski operations. And we had our, our director of activities at the time was from um, Lake Tahoe. And he had, he had run this pool that was open up year round and said, you know, we should have we should have it year round. So let's make sure we have enough uh, heaters to pull it year round. And then, you know, we had we had another couple of associates. We do a lot of entertainment, uh, large entertainment here at the resort. So instead of buying rigging, the conference services people said, instead of renting tents and rigging, why don't we just build a stage? So we built a stage as part of it. And then we had, you know, some some of the, the folks from the um, kids club that chimed in and started saying, oh, if we're going to do all this, wouldn't it be neat if we had a lazy river or something that you could stand up in? So we built a lazy river. And then food and beverage said, we need da 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 And it, it really was this combined effort that by July 4th of that year, we had built a whole new pool complex, which dramatically changed um, the resort. And that was... That was a good idea that someone listened to and that we started just bringing more and more associates into to make a better idea, better idea, better idea. Um, and now it's, it's, it is, it's changed the makeup and it saved our bacon, you know, on years when we, when it's been a little too warm to blow snow, at least we have an opportunity for people to come and, and be in the hot tub and be in the pool. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll echo that from Trey's perspective, you know, it's, you know, we definitely believe in, in servitude leadership here. Um, you know, as, as our owner and president always echoes to us, they are the subject matter experts. And you guys as, as leaderships have two, two always crucial goals. It's to remove obstacles and provide the tools. Um, and it goes well beyond the, the archaic days of the suggestion box. You know, there's always that the proclivity to not put your name in there. They're going to, you know, I'm saying something bad against management. I don't want to offer ideas. Um, so our owner and president uh, encourages us and and insists that we are out there talking to our associates. Um, and that's where the best ideas come because they are the subject matter experts. You know, to Trey's point with the idea of what is now this multimedia, you know, absolute juggernaut of amenity came from the genesis of, of one associate having that idea and talking with their leader. Um, and by ways, and I'm always on the technology side, what is making your job easier? You know, what is the, what are those tools that are, you know, it could be simple as a location of a time clock, um, efficiency, so on and so forth. We, we really make a, a huge point to talk to our associates because most likely, I, I mean, again, it's either one of two things, either they want something easier for them to do their jobs, but more ultimately for better guest experience mm -hmm. and I'm getting there earlier and I'm clocking in better and I'm getting these, you know, items rung in faster by the placement of the POS system. Um, and we have no idea that idea. You know, every managing director or VP in the in the uh, C suite is always, oh, we should put it here because that's where the designer said. Talk to the people, talk to your associates because they know better. Actually, the run from the kitchen to service a guest. Yeah, I think that's very good advice. 
tell me a little bit about your associate village project because mm-hmm. I imagine if you have 2400 acres you probably haven't got like easy places for people to live off property so they must be somehow living on property yeah I think you know I think this goes back to when uh, when we came out of COVID we started to have a, a formula that worked um, we started seeing demand shoot up, drive radius increase, et cetera, et cetera. And, and as we were coming out of COVID, we also needed to go back to basics and do some really basic training. Um, you know, it, it, we lost in in the in the few months we were closed. It seemed like we forgot everything about hospitality and start sort of at the beginning again. Um, and one of those things was attracting and and retaining great talent. And mm-hmm. so uh, Nemecolin is, like I mentioned before, it's not in the middle of the, it's not on the edge of the ocean. It's not in the middle of the mountains. Um, we're in a rural community, uh, about 40 minutes away from um, sort of the, the first major, mo- major metropolitan area in Morgantown, West Virginia, about an hour away from Pittsburgh. Um, so one of the things we saw is we brought leaders in that they wouldn't stay for very long. They would leave. And so uh, Maggie insisted that we start with um, creating a village, a community. And so we built uh, we built duplex housing units, we built single family housing units, um, we put in a market and um, and we were just about to open it for both uh, for the public as well as for uh, for the associates. and and Maggie said, we're not going to do that. We are going to operate this as an associate only market. so it's it's on par with uh, sort of a mini um, um, uh, what am I thinking of? Not fresh time, but uh, um, Whole Foods. Whole Foods, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean Whole Foods, and um, and we listened to the associates as well. We had a lot of um, of uh, folks from Jamaica, so we opened up with goat meat, which sold out the first two hours of opening the store. Amazing, um, and and really kind of kind of been in there. And her point was, I don't want someone that may have had uh, run in with a with a guest mm-hmm. in shorts trying to shop for on their time off, trying to shop for for staples and then have to feel uncomfortable in there. And that's that was a huge decision to say mm-hmm. we're going to we'll forego business in order to be able to uh, to treat the associates well. We also put in um, a, a, a workout facility uh, with a yoga room. We have instructors that are fitness instructors just for associates. We have a pub and restaurant that's just for associates and and we're discounting all of these um, these prices, not to resort prices, but we're competing with uh, the local grocery store and the local um, uh, bar down the corner. Actually, down the corner means about forty-five minute drive, but you know, uh, along those lines, um, we we uh, uh, cool. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris. No, I was going to add. I was going to add on uh, to trains. You know, obviously, you know, with that shift that happened with our guests, happened with our associates as well. Uh, for the first time in, in in my life, my my boss, my managing director, came in and said, "Sales needs to be involved with HR." I said, "But this is this is a, I've never been for, you know asked for that task." Now, just like it is attracting our new customer from a leisure standpoint, it's attracting our new associate. You know, you mentioned earlier now this you know the Gen Z is going to be coming up, the Gen Y, the Gen X is. We lost a whole generation of hospitality workers, obviously, with the pandemic, and you know our our owner and president saw this. A couple steps ahead, you said, not only is it going to be the shift from your group now to this luxury leisure and curating experiences, but now your associates are going to want so much more than just a paycheck. They're going to want a community. They're going to want a sense. Um, where, you know, we used to put something up, a job would be open, would be a short lead time of, you know, two to four weeks. We kept seeing that longer lead time. So what what offerings do we need to enhance? What offerings do we need to enhance for our associates to be happy here at work? And they weren't leaving their houses, right? Everyone was kind of saying, hunger down staying in cities, moving out. Um, and as Trey said, we're, you know, we're a little bit remote, but what can we provide for our associates that they're happy on a day-to-day basis? And the word that kept coming up and up again was community. Um, they want to have this new generation of workers really want to be intertwined more than I think we've ever, you know, in our in our yeah. generation, we we would work and we'd come home and I don't want to see my coworkers and I want to be out. This not, they actually all want to be together. And what we're finding through through our act of talking is that they want that sense of community. They want the gym. We put in a pub, you know, a, a bar on property for our associates that they can interact. And I got to be honest with you, uh, Robin, the synergies that are are unbelievable. They try to stay away from work talk and they try to enjoy their, their off times, but it always ends up being work talk, right? It always ends up, boy, I had this guest and we could do this. And that's what these great, that's the genesis and the origin of all these great ideas because they have that sense of community 
at the pub and they come back and talk to their leaders and say, you know what, we were talking about this the other day. It'd be much easier if we did X, Y, and Z for our customers and that they're, they're keeping ahead of our trends. So talk to me a little bit about what I'm going to call your culture in your associate village. I'm very familiar with another luxury brand that has a facility just like this. And one of the challenges they faced was, uh, I'm going to call them line workers, not necessarily wanting to encounter their boss on a Friday night. How are you guys navigating that one? I, I don't know. Personally, I found it's the exact opposite. I, um, okay. I come in on Friday night. That's good. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, we're uh, we have great conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, there are there are absolutely people that don't want to and um, don't want to engage, and they want to have a good time. They don't want to be judged while they've you know had a couple of drinks or they're having laughs with their friends. And that's mm-hmm. we understand that implicitly. But on the other hand, you know, in the collaborative effort that we're trying to do with all our associates. We've done a lot of napkin planning in um, at the pub, you know, where someone comes up and says, "I've got this great idea. Uh, do you have a few minutes to talk?" And we sit down with literally with a bar napkin, and you know, as we said before, um, and come up with some of those ideas. So I think, you know, I, I think this goes back to the culture of the of the resort, and our our management culture consists of three very specific things. The first one is um, listening, care for your associates. That's the first thing right off the bat. The second is work hard. So when you're at work, it's you're not spending a lot of time at the water cooler. Um, you're you're being productive during those times. And I'm not saying that we need to work 100 hours a week, but um, but we all know when we need to be busy and when we don't. And then the last thing, which I think is is our core tenant, and this one really goes back to to uh, everything from from the president down to to um, to everyone throughout the resort is check your ego at the door. None of us mm-hmm. have time for egos. We're moving so fast that that I have no pride of authorship. I have no pride of of ideas that come up. I'd love to celebrate the heck out of someone else doing that. And and um, and I think if you if you nurture those things, then some of the awkwardness that that you had mentioned at uh, prior areas tends to melt away a little bit. How approachable are you? How you know that, and that should be a barometer of our leadership too. You know, if we have a yeah. leader that walks into the the bar and everybody leaves. No, we got a problem. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, I think that's an excellent point. We're just about out of time here, Trey, but I do want to ask you one more question. So what's your key piece of advice for all of the people who view this broadcast regarding blending multiple business models together to yeah. create this sustainable multifaceted hospitality business model that you guys are making work? You know, I think if I can point it down to one, one key, it's communication. And that communication, we've mentioned it throughout this, this, this time together is listening, um, asking, asking questions, um, and, and getting the stakeholders, whether they're guests, whether they're associates, whether they're developers, whether they're designers, all the stakeholders sort of on the same page. And then over communicating, over communicating, over communicating, and taking the time during those 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 periods to um, to ask probing questions. I I am the last person. I am I am the dumbest person on our on our senior leadership team. Hire people that are smarter than you, and and let them do their jobs, and listen to the people, and develop them, and encourage um, through those communication development of 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 the folks that are are talking to the guests on a daily basis. Well, I think that's an excellent place to leave it. Chris and Trey, I want to thank you both so much for your time. It's been a pleasure to meet you. You've been watching The Innovative Hotelier. Join us again soon for up-to-the-minute insights and information specifically for the hotel and hospitality industry.